starting from build, we've been able to have Teams application exposed in the Microsoft Outlook and also in Microsoft 365 app. Well, well, that's the new name of Microsoft.com. So, uh, and starting from 1.16 of SharePoint Framework, you will be able to use SharePoint Framework to do this. So, we wanted to do a quick intro and recap on why, what, what, what again was the what was the SharePoint Framework all about? Why does it matter? Why would I be interested on it? And then the new opportunities what we have here, and then Alex is going to do a live demo on this one as well. First of all. SharePoint Framework is the easiest way to build your enterprise solution for Microsoft 365. The name is really confusing. We have this problem uh, internally, with more, even after the level of marketing, because they keep on telling that it's a SharePoint, um, SharePoint solution, but it's actually could be something else. Um, and we're going to go through the different scenarios in a second. It provides you an automatic single sign-on, so you don't have to worry about authentication. It's full built, built in uh, in the framework. It provides you automatic hosting, which is a really big benefit as, as we're having discussions with enterprise customers who want to have their code not necessarily running outside of their tenant or even uh, they, they might be against on you hosting your, their code within their own Azure subscription. So automatic hosting without any additional cost, any additional operational overhead uh, with SharePoint Framework. Development experience is consistent across all of the different uh, development uh, or platform, and we are using industry standard tooling. So no pro proprietary proprietary uh, development tooling or uh, things. Uh, we are using Microsoft Graph, WebStack tooling, React, or whatever uh, JavaScript framework you want to actually use. Now, starting with the new announcements uh, within Ignite, we actually had some new uh, capabilities available available for Microsoft 365. And again, these are coming in 1.16. So already before Ignite, we've been able to build for SharePoint. We've been able to build for Microsoft Viva connection. And if you're wondering what are those two logos, the first logo is Microsoft Viva logo, and the second one is Microsoft Viva connection in the top. You've been, of course, being able to build experiences for Microsoft Teams. And now with the support of extending those personal applications also to Outlook and Office app or office.com, you're able to build in there as well. The really cool thing here is that it's exactly the same piece of code, which is automatically hosted without any operational cost, with automatic single sign-on, uh, with industry standard tooling. The same piece of code can work as a application page, as a web part, as a personal application, as a Teams tab, or exposed directly in Outlook and Office.com or Office 365 app. So you're basically maximizing the return of investment for the experiences. And just to quickly call out, so of course, uh, we can build experiences with SharePoint Framework and SharePoint. That's kind of given in the name, but then it starts already getting confusing. You can use the SharePoint Framework to build experiences in Microsoft Teams, um, and those are the UX experiences there. You can build experiences in Microsoft Viva. Um, the left side picture is, is the new Viva home, which was announced uh, a few weeks back. You cannot see that yet, but it's actually coming quite soon, and we'll share more opportunities on that as well. And starting then uh, with the 1.16, and Alex is going to show this, we can actually take the SharePoint Framework solution and expose that directly in Outlook and also in the Microsoft 365 or in office.com. And you'll get access on the API surface level as well using the Teams JavaScript SDK v2. But rather than me explaining this from a picture perspective, let's actually jump into demo in Alex's screen and see this one in practice. Okay. So uh, basically, as uh, Vesa mentioned, uh, and as Gary showed uh, as well, now we can host personal Teams applications in Office.com and uh, in Outlook. Basically, it means that if you have personal app developed using SharePoint Framework, you can do that as well. So currently, I'm in Microsoft Teams. I have this rule them all application. And uh, as you can see, we know in SPFX that uh, currently we are running in uh, Teams. I have the same application in office.com. Again, same rule with the mobile application, but now the app is running in office.com. And uh, the same for Outlook. When I'm in Outlook, of course, we are running in the Outlook. So let me show uh, the code and what it means from the code perspective. So first of all, right now, 
when you like uh, sync to teams from uh, SharePoint app catalog, we will not provision all the uh, information to Outlook and uh, Office.com because uh, sync to teams is now uh, still working with the old version of the manifest. So to make it happen, uh, you need to create your custom manifest.json file and uh, we have documentation how uh, to do that. But uh, the really important thing is uh, you need to use manifest version 1.13 or 1.14. Uh, in that case, your static tabs, which is personal app, will be provisioned uh, to Outlook uh, and Office.com. Everything else is basically the same. So it's a standard manifest for Teams. Uh, you use the same uh, content URL as uh, usual with the uh, Teams logon and uh, Teams hosted tab.sbx with the uh, component ID used as an ID for the, your application, etc., etc., etc. So everything else is completely the same as for any other SPFX solution. Uh, and as soon as you do this custom manifest, uh, you create a zip file uh, archive, then you create a PKG as usual, and you still can use uh, sync to teams functionality from app catalog. Now let me show you in the code uh, how it will look like in SPFX 1.16 and in the next beta that will be released probably in the uh, next week or so. So we are changing the uh, typings for uh, Microsoft Teams, Teams GS. It will be actually Teams GS v2 now and you have all the goodness from Teams GS. Uh, from there, I'm just getting the uh, context, and uh, as you can see, the APIs are changed. Previously, we had like Teams.js dot get context, and we should uh, should pass a callback function. Instead of that, we are game we are doing Teams.js dot tab dot get context, and now it's uh, finally a promise. When we got the context, in the context we have the host and we have the name, which is actually an enum. And based on this uh, name, we can get if we are in Office, in Outlook, or in Teams. So uh, pretty easy. Uh, you have other things like client type. In that case, you can uh, you can kind of understand if you are on mobile, if you are on in web browser, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so uh, richer uh, context uh, is available in Teams JS v2. And uh, as mentioned, these typings will be uh, part of uh, SPFX 1.16. But to be honest, even if you want to play around with it right now, you can do something like uh, Teams.js like that as any in uh, your current solution, because in the service side of the thing, things we already load in Teams.js v2. So basically it is available. Uh, the only piece that is still needed to be kind of processed is typings for third party solutions delivered as part of SharePoint framework generator. And that's all I have. Excellent. So and and before you stop uh, sharing two questions, uh, this is the new to default template then uh, from a code perspective. Uh, yes, the code perspective will show this get environment method message with uh, this uh, SDK Team.js and uh, how to work with the context. So basically, yeah. before that, we had like if we are in Teams or if we are in SharePoint. Now we will have if we are in Office, if we are in Outlook, or if we are in Teams. Yeah, excellent. And then the other point, uh, which was good um, uh, to call out as well, that even though the hubs, meaning the, the Outlook, um, well, the experiences in GA in certain some of the features are only available when you put the the products in preview, right? Do you remember what what are the the exact status related on? What are the preview requirements for making things happen? Yeah, so uh, for now, and it should uh, change uh, relatively quickly. I believe the uh, team site domain resolution is not working on all the tenants. So if you want to play with it, you will need to provide your actual domain, actual tenant domain for now. Uh, but it is something that should be rolled out uh, pretty quickly. Excellent. Now, and, and of course, as part of the release of 1.16, uh, we'll provide additional documentation and guidance on all of the different steps and guidance videos and all of that. So people can do this super easily in the future. But thank you, Alex, on this one. Really, really cool stuff. Mm -hmm.